Today's video is going to be a fun one because some of the most fun that I've had in the game recently is when I turn the lobby to private mode so no one can join and I just do ruthless solo clears on different classes with different weapons to really just test myself and gauge, you know, truly just how good my weapons and my builds are. In fact, when I review a weapon here on my channel, uh, it's always after really putting these things through the ringer to see what they're, you know, truly worth. So today, I'm gonna share my best tips and advice for those of you who maybe you wanna be good enough to be able to solo ruthless operations, or just in general, when you uh, maybe, for example, get match made into a lobby with a couple of players that are low level, maybe they don't run ruthless very often and they're really struggling, and you wanna be able to carry that extra weight, maybe help them get to the finish line, hey, these tips are gonna help you out. And all of the gameplay in the background will be completely solo on the Ruthless difficulty. At this point, I've got Ruthless solo clears on all the classes, so most of these tips will be universal regardless of your class. So let's dive into it. I'll even have you guys solo Ruthless clearing the fall of Atreus by the end of this video. Let me just tell you right now, up front, the number one most important skill for you to master if you want to solo Ruthless content is melee combat. You gotta master melee combat. And this goes deeper than just, oh, block when see blue, dodge when see orange. It's a lot more than that. Probably the most useful ability in melee combat is the ability to recognize combos and timing of attacks from your enemy. So for example, the Tyranid Majors with the Whips, they have a three hit combo where the second attack is slightly delayed, okay? So if you spam the parry button, it's a very easy trap to fall into. It's just, oh, things are attacking me. Let me just keep spamming the parry button. Don't do that. If you spam the parry block button, you'll block the first attack, but then the second one will end up hitting you, which will in turn probably make you get hit by the third attack as well. And on the Ruthless difficulty, if you get hit by two of those attacks, hey, there goes all your armor and most of your hit points. And now you're fighting from behind, trying to reclaim that contested health. And quite honestly, the best way to learn the timing of these combos is frankly just to get hit by them a lot and sometimes even lose a run because you screw it up. Okay, failure is one of the best teachers. So don't be afraid to just queue up ruthless difficulty stuff and don't be afraid to fail multiple runs in a row. You know, it's okay. It, you're learning from that. This is one of the best ways that you can grow and get acclimated to specifically that environment, that high pressure environment, is to put yourself in the pressure cooker and let yourself get friggin' cooked, you know, several times before you start to really acclimate to it and you can live up to that pressure. You can withstand that pressure. So then the next time you see them winding up after you've been hit by it a bunch, maybe you see them winding up for that whip attack and you'll have some more trigger discipline and you'll think to yourself, okay, I got a block, wait, block, block, gun strike. You know what I mean? So you're going to get into a much better rhythm because failure is one of the best teachers. And that takes me to the next tip. Know when to take those gun strikes and those executions and know when to leave them be. Okay, there are times when I'm completely surrounded by majors and I'll leave an executable uh, enemy just standing there because they'll sit there for several seconds like that before they snap out of it. You can leave it there just in case you get hit and then you take it when you actually want to get that armor charge back. So if you're full health, full, full armor, you get somebody executable, maybe you want to hold off. And gun strikes, by the way, can be interrupted. So sometimes you'll queue up a gun strike, but you'll want to wait a couple of seconds before you execute that gun strike. Okay, you'll see that red target pop up. Don't immediately pull the trigger and take that gun strike because you want to wait on this maybe other enemy to finish their attack and you want to parry that one, then take your first gun strike and then react to the guy that you parry. You know what I'm saying? And you can't have multiple Minoris enemy gun strikes queued up. It's only one Minoris enemy at a time, but you can in fact have multiple Majoris gun strikes queued up. So make sure it's safe to take that attack before you do it. You might actually end up putting a, a domino effect you know, lined up for you where maybe you uh, perfectly dodge one guy, but a blue attack is coming in. You have now a gun strike queued up on the guy you dodged. But before you take it, you want to go ahead and parry this guy that's coming in with a, a blue attack on you. So you parry him, turn back, gun strike the first guy, turn back, gun strike the second guy, turn back and execute the first guy, turn around and smack the second guy. You know what I'm saying? So it can be this domino effect. And again, it just comes with repetition. So don't always just immediately take the execution or immediately take the gun strike. Take stock of what you've got around you and what your options are. 
those gun strikes, those executions, they're not going anywhere immediately. So you've got time to sort of process what's going on around you before you take those chances and those executions and gun strikes. Now let's talk about items. Okay, first and foremost, you're going to want to explore every nook and cranny of the map, okay? Medicaid stims can be found in lots of places, as well as in the breakable green box stacks. Uh, so break those two. You'll also want to be on the lookout for Guardian Relics, which can save you runs, right? If you're not familiar with the Guardian Relics, they're the uh, the little, like, white, uh, I don't know what you call it. I don't know. If, what does it look like? It looks almost like a, a miniature tombstone or something. It's got a little, like, cross on it. You pick those up. And whenever you go down, uh, you can just, uh, I don't know what it is on the controller, but on the MNK, it's you hit F or whatever your heal button is, and that will consume the relic and let you self-revive without having to wait on a teammate to come over and do it for you. And it will cure a mortal wound at the same time. So uh, definitely pick those up when you find them. Make sure you go in and looking for them. Also make sure that you clear your mortal wounds if you go down, okay? So as long as you use a Medicaid stim to heal past your maximum HP, then you'll go ahead and clear that mortal wound. So you uh, you can go down again safely and not immediately lose and just wait for a bot companion to come pick you back up. Now, when it comes to grenades, my honest advice here is to prioritize crack grenades. I mean, use any other grenades you see and uh, you know try and make the best use of them, but crack grenades will give you a lot of help in the toughest situations when playing solo, okay? They're one-shot kills against zoanthropes, which is a big help when you get the two of them to spawn and they're shielding each other. They're big chunk damage against the Neurothrope too, if you get one of those, which if you're a Bulwark or an, ass an Assault, right, you better hope and pray that you don't get one of those because you don't have a primary weapon. So having those crack grenades is gonna help offset that. Even if you do get a Neurothrope and uh, you, you don't have a primary weapon because of your class choice, it's not a big deal. They're pretty easy to dodge their attacks and just wait for them to do the ground wave attack so you can run inside the green bubble and start wailing on them with your melee weapon. It's a longer process. It takes some time to whittle them down that way. But even if you have zero ammo, you can still take these guys down. But that being said, it is my genuine advice that you conserve your ammunition for situations where you really do need it, okay? You don't want to blow through your ammo on gaunts that you could have just, you know, smacked around with your melee weapon only to be pinned against a wall by a Carnifex and have to rely on melee attacks and gun strikes, which are difficult against the Carnifex because most of his melee attacks that are parryable do not actually queue up gun strikes. So save that ammo for when you need it. Next up, let's talk about target prioritization, okay? A lot of times you'll have between 30 and 60 enemies in play at a single time. So where do you start? What do you do? Well, it's my recommendation that you start with the guys that can do the biggest chunk damage to you in the shortest amount of time. That means target the snipers and target the guys with the venom cannons that uh, they, sh they shoot this sort of burst fire grouping of projectiles at you because those can shred your HP if you're not careful. So targeting these guys first and leaving just melee combatants to deal with is probably the best course of action. Next tip, try to keep everything in front of you, okay? The things that will ruin a run are often the attacks that come from behind. You might see a blue marker or an orange marker coming from behind, but you don't know what that enemy is. And so it could be a delayed attack or it could be a rushed attack. And knowing what it is means being able to reliably parry or dodge it. But if you don't know what that attack actually is, chances are pretty decent that you're going to get hit by it and get staggered by it and then get hit by a different attack from a different enemy. So they, they sort of stack up on you. So the best thing you can do when you're starting to get surrounded is try to slowly work your way to a place where two conditions are met. First, most if not all of the enemies are now in front of you. And second condition, you now have your back to an exit point, not a wall. Walls are not your friend. You don't want to get squeezed against a wall if you can help it. Sometimes you can't help it, you, you might just have to deal with that. But if you can, then make sure you have your back to a way out if things go sideways. I really do think at the end of the day, discipline will take you really far in this game. It's about having patience. You need to hit that button to progress the mission, right? You need to interact with the console to progress a mission. So you run over to it and you go through the animation to push that button, but you do it before you take the time to clear out all the, the threats and the enemies around. And so you take a bunch of damage that you didn't need to take. Or let's say you're surrounded, so you just start smashing the parry button because you think, oh, it's going to catch something, right? Then you just keep getting kicked around because your guy keeps doing the parry animation at the wrong times. So just slow your roll, 
Stay calm. Before you interact with consoles or objective points, make sure you clear all of the relevant threats. And try to actually visually identify melee attacks before you input the command. The timing is pretty forgiving if you wait until the last second, but if you're too early, you're likely setting yourself up for some follow-up attacks too. So keep your cool, be patient, work on that trigger discipline that we talk about so much here. And lastly, make sure you know your class perks that you selected and the perks on your weapon trees as well, because knowing what tools are in your belt will make you a much bigger threat to the enemies of the Emperor. So use every advantage given to you. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching the video today. If you enjoyed it, then please let me know by leaving a like on the video as that's the best free way to support the content right here on YouTube. Thank you so much to the thousands of new subscribers to the channel. I'm so glad you found your way here. If you'd like to get involved in an active Space Marine community that's always grinding together and helping each other to get good clears here in Space Marine 2, then feel free to check out the link to our Patreon in the pinned comment or the description and check out that super cheap $3 tier which gives you access to the private Discord, LFG room, general chat, and several squad voice chat rooms for teams that are grouping up. If you have any issues getting your Patreon and Discord linked up, just DM me there on Patreon and we'll get you sorted easily. And with that, I say be warm and well-fed, my friends. Courage and honor.